what's going on again welcome to video two in this Strathmore drawing workshop when you're learning to draw from the very beginning the very basics of drawing I uh, hope you enjoyed video one so if you haven't checked that one out definitely go check it out so video two here we're gonna be talking about blocking in method for drawing simple objects uh, really drawing anything but we're gonna start out with simple objects it's important to start out very simple so we can we can build up confidence over time and we can slowly start challenging ourselves. But we gotta start simple. You gotta start with just cups, bowls, plates, chairs, tables, anything around you, start out there. It's really a good place to start out. Something that's very simple, just one simple object, nothing too complex. So we're gonna talk about blocking in methods, a few different methods to use and to try out, to experiment with. I encourage you to always experiment, always push yourself to try new things and just see what works for you. You never know what might actually work for you. That's the thing. So you definitely want to try out these different blocking in methods. I'm going to share with you a blocking in method that I use, uh, my own intuitive kind of blocking in approach. So that'll be very interesting. So this is all about how to start sketching uh, objects within the real world, how to take those simple lines and shapes that we learned about last time and a little more confidence with our materials now, now that we're a little more acquainted with them and we're going to take these simple shapes, simple lines, and try to turn them into something, or at least turn them into the shape of an object. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. It'll be very beneficial for your drawings later on. This is very important, fundamental here, learning how to block in objects. It's going to save you a lot of headache, a lot of time in your drawings later on. So this is very important to learn and to practice a lot and uh, it'll really help you gain confidence and you'll get rid of any fear that you might have had when it comes to drawing. So let's get into the first blocking in method. All right, so we're gonna talk about blocking in methods. There's a few different methods. Um, it's kind of a very intuitive process. There's no like right or wrong way to do it, but there are better ways to do it than others. So today I'm gonna to be using this little object here. I have a glass uh, jar. That I'm going to be using, you can use whatever object you have laying around in your studio, at your house, at your work, whatever is convenient for you. You can use a photograph if you want. It's personal preference. Use whatever uh, makes sense to you, something you want to draw. I'm just using something very simple, but still a little complex to kind of demonstrate and illustrate some ideas, but uh, definitely start out very, very simple. You know, we're, we're just learning to draw now and learning to sketch. So we want to start out with very, very simple things that will make us feel confident. So if you just pick up a cup or something in your house or a bowl, anything, um, something simple, that's what's going to be useful. So I'm going to lay this down right over here. And I'm going to use that in a variety of different angles and stuff to kind of show you guys uh, how I would go about blocking in this object. Because it, it can be kind of difficult. Um, so for blocking in, I'm also going to use like a darker pencil. I'm using a 3B here specifically, but normally what you really want to use is something very light, like a B, an HB, sometimes even a 2H or an H, something light. You want to be very, very light. Um, as I've said in the past video, you want to be, make start off very, very light. But just for the video's sake, I'm going to start out darker so you guys can see what I'm actually doing. So for blocking this in, uh, there's a few different methods. So one of the first ones I always like to talk about is the straight line blocking in method. And as you probably have guessed, it's using only straight lines. So what we're going to do before I get into this, I'll try to explain it a little bit here. So imagine whatever angle your, your subject is at, it doesn't matter. It could be at this weird angle, right, instead of just flat straight on if you're looking at it. You want to imagine straight lines around the outer perimeter of your object. Imagine you're laying these flat sticks around the outer perimeter of the, of the object, of the subject. So let's say it's flat on like this. You know, we have a straight line here and then this corner connecting to this corner. So imagine these sticks, these straight lines. These are the lines that we're going to be drawing, these angles. We're going to try to draw these angles on our paper. So even this angle here and then this angle here, we're going to draw these on our paper. 
So that's kind of the first method. So if I start out here, So you want to draw long, straight lines. You want to draw them longer than they need to be. And that just gives you more of a feel for the angle. So like I said, use any object you have laying around. It doesn't really matter. So I'll block in this very, very quickly. And my demonstration here, it's going to be quick because these videos can't be super duper long. But, uh, you know, I've done drawings before where I've done this block-in phase for about one hour, sometimes half an hour. You know, these, these block-ins can, can really take a long time if you want them to. Um, if you really want to get a super accurate drawing and you want to like measure everything that you're doing and make sure you block in everything. You know, I've tried to be super accurate with my drawings before. And uh, yeah, sometimes this blocking in phase can take very, very long. So that's something I did in just a minute here, very quickly. So this is kind of the outer perimeter, or at least what I perceive as the outer perimeter of this object right now. So that's what we only want to focus on is this outer perimeter. We don't want to start cutting in or doing anything on the inside yet. You really want to uh, make everything as correct as possible as you can imagine, as you think. And a way to fix things, if you need to fix something, if you made your object too short and fat or too tall, you can just draw the line, just correct that line. So let's say I wanted to move the bottom up, so I just drew that up and then erase the old one. So it's easier to kind of correct the line first and then erase the old one. So let's say like, oh, do we need to make this sm shorter or smaller? Just draw it like that and then we'll correct this. So just by doing that, you can start correcting these proportions, but proportions we're going to talk about later on in this video series. But for right now, just focus on doing as best you can. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just th this is a very challenging kind of method for blocking in. I understand that, but it's very, very useful. And I'll explain to you why here in just a few minutes. But this is one of the most useful blocking in methods I've, I've come across and that I've done and practiced and used a lot in my drawings. And uh, it helps tremendously. Um, one thing you can try to do, so basically I'll, I'll show you guys what I was kind of looking at here. So this is kind of the mouth of the jar here, somewhere like this. So you can start to see, here's like the circular opening of that mouth. You know, it's not perfect. Like I said, it would take it would take you know maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes to really get this thing nice, but you know I was looking at more like this angle. So and then this would be the handle coming out like this. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So so here's another thing to practice with with the straight line block in method. So. Uh, the reason I like to use the straight line block in method is because it gets rid of these curves. So when we look at this object, it has a lot of curves here, these subtle kind of curves, uh, a not so subtle curve at the top here, curves here, there's curves all over this thing. Um, there's hardly any straight lines, you know, maybe here, uh, but everything else is very curved. Even this has a subtle curve, but you could draw it as a straight line. So what I love about the straight line blocking method is that you can simplify these curves. So imagine we have a circle, right? So how to draw a circle using the straight line blocking method is to draw a square. So we're going to draw a square here, at least as squares we can we can come across right now. And and like I said, this is really great practice to do. I, I really recommend this exercise. And now we're going to overlap it with another square. But this time we're going to turn that square. More like a diamond shape. We're going to turn it like 90 degrees, I believe. So now we have a square with a square turned on top of it. And now we have these points. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points around uh, this kind of layering of squares. 
all these corners, we're going to cut off those corners. So what I mean by that is we're going to intersect them like this. We're going to cut them off. And like I said, you want to be doing this with like a light pencil. It's going to look very funny when I'm using this dark pencil. But if you're doing this with like an H or something, something very light, it's going to be way more valuable to you. Now this will show you <laughs> how good you are drawing, uh, doing these proportions and stuff. You can see you're starting to get a, a spherical shape here. At least if you did it more correctly than me, you'll get a little bit better shape. But you know, you can tweak these lines a little bit. We can bring this in, keep cutting it in a little bit more. Now, if you do this very, very lightly, you can easily erase all these lines. Now, mine's a little bit more dark, so I'm going to have a little bit more trouble. But what you'll end up getting is basically a circle. Now, mine's kind of poor, but if you were to kind of fix this up, It is one method for drawing a circle, and it, it really demonstrates the, the need for straight lines in these blocking in uh, kind of stages of a drawing. Because sometimes if, if I just went for the circle, yeah, I, I could just go and draw a circle very quickly, right? Like a circle is not too difficult to draw, but you can see there is some imperfections here. Like if I really needed a, a straight, you know, perfect circle, I'd have to really correct it here, and I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm correcting it. Like, it, could, it just be, could be a little bit more difficult. But let's say you're drawing something that just has like subtle kind of curves, maybe some kind of curve like this. That can be very difficult to replicate if that's our subject and we have to sit here and kind of draw it, like, you know, try to duplicate that curve in our own drawing. That can be very difficult. So one thing we can do is to simplify this curve. This is our subject on our paper we could just take this curve, okay, we have a straight line there, straight line here, straight line, straight line, straight line. So if, if our object has these like simple, subtle curves, we can just simplify it into straight lines first. So something like this. And then now from, from these kind of straight lines, if you get rid of these kind of extra guidelines here, and you start cutting off the corners, as I was showing earlier with this circle, we start cutting off these corners. You can start to see you get a lot more subtle curves. It really starts looking like a, a, a curve. So this is kind of the idea of these straight line block in methods is, is it's so much easier to judge angles using straight lines rather than just trying to go in and, and, and do that curve. Like, oh, is that the right curve? Or does this need to be more like this? Or this need to be, you know, you'll sit there all day trying to fix these curves when in reality, if you just drew the angle, you could, you could more easily judge it. Like, oh no, this needs to be more like this. This needs to be more like this. You know, you could really, really judge the angles a lot more easily. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this is helping. Definitely try this. It's gonna take a lot of practice. Uh, so I, I really uh, encourage you to take a lot of these simple objects like this, even simpler than this one, please do something simpler, and just draw it many, many, many times. Uh, just that first block-in stage. You know, basically just practice doing these block-ins uh, over and over and over. Because we want to get used to this first stage of, of drawing. We want to get used to like blocking in stuff. Okay, this is way too far out, so we've got to bring this in. You know, something like that. So you just keep doing them over and over and over. And take your time. Take like 10 or 15 minutes just doing one object like this. Really take your time. So that's the straight line block-in method. We'll go to another block-in method here that, uh, that I use. And it's kind of a mixture of, of kind of what we talked about in the first video of using like simple shapes, kind of like ovals and stuff. So imagine with this object, we have like, you could imagine... It really is a square, actually, when we look at the outer outside of this uh, 
object, right, this cup, this jar, it's actually a square with a circle on top, a cylinder on top. So it's actually a cube. So if you could imagine a cube like this, just quickly draw some kind of cube. That's our, that's our jar right here. So if, you, if you're able to draw a cube and then you could just draw some lines coming out the top and then draw an oval, now you have the top of this and that's literally our jar right there. Maybe the maybe this needs to be a little bit wider. You know, we can correct that and make the oval bigger. And then, you know, we do have a handle coming out. You know, whatever side you want the handle to come out on, you can draw the handle coming out. Something like this very quickly. I'm doing stuff very quickly here just for demonstration, but definitely take your time with this. Definitely take your time. But right away, we can get a cool block in, a very simplified kind of block in that's, that has volume to it. You know, if you wanted, you could draw the other sides of the, of the cube here, the see-through. And make it like a glass cube. And you could draw this at any angle. It just depends, you know, you just make the sides of the cube different lengths. So this one could be smaller and shorter, and then this side will make bigger and larger. And then now we have our little glass cube. Once again, we just draw this little cylinder on top. So this is all just from simple forms, you know, a cylinder. I think we all know what a cylinder is. It's just like a can, you know. It's basically two ovals with the lines connected. So we put a small cylinder on top here. And if you drew, the, drew this very lightly, all these guidelines, you know, you can erase where they need to be erased. So you wanna draw this like super, super lightly. Use that pressure sensitivity, that very light pressure sensitivity that we talked about in the first video. And then you can just add on this handle, you know, wherever it needs to be. You can draw straight lines there. So what I like to do for my um, block-in method, my personal kind of block-in method. I kind of use a mixture of this this uh, method with straight line block-in. So, uh, you know, I like to I like to for the curves for the curve areas. You know, if I'm drawing something very curvy, like an animal or something, something that just has a lot of organic curves. Sometimes I'll start out with just like a circle for the body or something, or the head maybe, and then draw like the snout like this, you know, coming off and then the ears. You know, sometimes I'll do something like that, like kind of a building block kind of drawing. But then if, if I'm running into like an issue or something, if I, I really can't get the angles right, I'll just start drawing straight lines on this and really figuring out the angles. So sometimes I just go with the flow, depending on the subject that I'm drawing. I will use completely straight lines for some areas, and then other areas I'll just intuitively, kind of like, if I feel confident with the curve that I'm gonna be drawing, like, okay, this, this curve's pretty easy, I, I feel confident drawing this curve here, it looks really nice, but this part, okay, I'm having trouble here, so I'm gonna just draw some straight lines. Okay, yeah, that's right. So I can fix that curve, you know, so I intuitively go with what I feel. Um, and, and once you do like a few, once you do a lot, not a few, but you do a lot of these different kinds of block ins, you'll eventually come up with some kind of block in method that's your own. And sometimes you don't even want to start out with a full shape like this. You know, um, if you're drawing like a portrait, sometimes it's better to you could do something like this where sometimes it's better to just draw like a few marks like okay here's the top of the head bottom of the head and here's the sides of the head and then okay this is where the eyes are going to be sometimes it's easy to just draw these little marks and then if something is wrong you know let's say okay i'm going to put the nose bottom of the nose should be here let's say you're measuring all this right okay hairline should be there Bottom of the nose, here's the mouth. You can already start to see a face almost. Here's the ears. 
you start to see a face without even filling there's the eyebrows without even having to draw a bunch of lines but if something is off if something's wrong okay the nose needs to move up you only need to change this little small dash right so that's something to think about i think the eyes need to come out a little bit more see so if i want to change the eye shape i can just change these small little dashes okay so I'm drawing like these dashes are like the outer limits of everything. So the eyes would be in here somewhere, right? The nose. So sometimes depending on your subject, it just depends on what you're feeling and, and you really gotta be, try to be intuitive about it. And if you're, not, if you're unsure, it's okay. You know, you can start out just drawing a head like this. You know, everyone's gonna draw a head differently. Some people will start out with a circle like this and then draw lines down so it, it's it's an intuitive approach whatever feels best for you whatever you're more comfortable doing just try these kind of different methods of like straight line blocking method really breaking things down into the very basic simple shapes that we talked about you know triangles and pyramids and uh, cubes cylinders break everything down everything you can um, you know, like I said, this head here, it's, it's literally just a circle with kind of this tapered cylinder in a way. So there's endless ways to block in. Uh, I hope this helps you. I hope this made sense. Really practice a lot of these different methods and uh, get comfortable with these straight lines because these straight lines are going to be your friend. These straight lines are very, very valuable uh, for uh, very helpful for troubleshooting if you're running into problems you know drawing curves or a circle and you can just put some straight lines down and really fix your angles it's so much easier to judge these straight lines and straight angles than these curves so uh, anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you on the next one we're going to talk about some uh, some other more advanced stuff we're going to keep advancing uh, until we get to a the last video where we're going to do a demonstration. So hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for the next one. Take care of yourself. Peace.